What's going on, Digital Wildcatters? Welcome back to another week of oil and gas startups. Got a pretty exciting show this week. We have my guys Chris and John from CUD Well Control over here. And the reason it's exciting to me, I was telling John before we got on the mic that uh, I always wanted to be in well control when I was in the oil field. I looked at that as like the all-star job, just getting it called in and uh, and controlling wild wells. So thanks for coming on the show, Chris. You were at Fuse uh, yeah. several months ago, so we got to we got to talk there. Um, and sounds like y'all are building some pretty cool stuff over at Cud and uh, reimagining uh, well control. But before we get into that, you know, someone's not familiar with Cud. Let's kind of talk about Cud as a company what CUD does and then what y'all do on the wall control side. And then we can dive into all the software. So yeah, whichever one of y'all wants to kick it off. Sure. Yeah. I'll kind of kick it off. Um, so I mean, CUD's been around for quite a while, right? I mean, it started with like the first snubbing unit with, uh, Mr. CUD back in 77, I think, you know, and so out in Western Oklahoma slowly grew it up. And then, um, you know, kind of interesting take that the Rollins family, um, bought into it and, um, I think it was early '80s, mm-hmm. and it kind of turned into eventually what is now, you know, RPC companies, which has, you know, we've got all kinds of different, you know, conglomerate companies underneath different service companies there. Yeah. Uh, but so Cud, you know, kind of evolved and and uh, started with the the snubbing side, and and eventually kind of coil, and and then the well control piece. Remind me, I can't remember exactly where around that. Came so they in. they used to uh, just do the snubbing, and then every once in a while, some pressure control jobs would come in, like somebody had to circulate a kick or you know, hot tap or something. And he, and, uh, could would go in and do this as a side business to help guys out. Yeah. And he's like, well, we can make a lot of money doing this. So, so like, it's funny how things work out. You're like, Oh, mm-hmm. we're doing this one off. Maybe we can commercialize yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Business off yeah. Of it. yeah, exactly. So when did uh cut wall control start? When did it started, uh, in, in 77, the day one, he, he started yeah, doing all this doing stuff on the side. The side. Okay, but we, gotcha. we have a it, early on, it was, everybody would do everything. So like, you know, you have a guy and he he'd be an expert in snubbing, well control, hot tap, freeze jobs, and and we have our, we had our own group started in like the nineties, I think, for kind of well control, yeah. carved out more specific, carved out, mm-hmm. yeah. And I mean, it's a pretty small uh, ecosystem for well control, right? You know, you have Cud, you have all well control. Who else? Brandex. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> boots and coots. Yeah, there <laughs> yeah. you go. So yeah. you don't really have. I mean, it's like this very uh, specialized service right mm-hmm. right and i assume that just a lot of people don't want to mess around with it that's why they don't go start it's, that oh, yeah. yeah i mean you're talking Texas. about the most dangerous work in the oil field right mm-hmm. right right yeah so let's talk i want to kind of do a well control um 101 like you're talking about like these uh, like freezing techniques like mm-hmm. let's talk about the different techniques of well control real quick for anyone that may not be familiar with it including myself you know i don't know what the sure. freezing techniques are. So let's talk so, about that. Real so, quick. uh, nowadays, well, it used to be, you could, you would use like dry ice and, or you'd pump nitrogen. But as far as I know, um, uh, everybody nowadays uses uh, nitrogen. They wrap a, a well with, uh, like tubing. Yeah. Metal tubing and they pump liquid nitrogen through it. Okay. And it, and it cools off. It cools off anything. Get it, get as low as a two twenty. No, we, we don't yeah. want to get it to as low as 220. Now, I've heard about some new technologies like some spray on, uh, like you spray something, then you, you stick a hose up and it's like a, a CO2. Yeah. But it's, it's pretty ubiquitous is, is the nitrogen uh, freezing. Got you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when people think of wall control, they think of, you know, old videos, of, you know, going out there and, you know, throwing a flare mm-hmm. on it using dynamite. And so you see some pretty, uh, cool things um do they still use those techniques a lot in wall control or are we not more, are not we more dynamite advanced? uh they <laughs> yeah. it used to be they would use it all the time myron kinley he yeah he pioneered the wall control industry yeah and he brought on uh red adair and shortly after world war ii and he was an explosives expert in world war ii so they used dynamite for everything <laughs> but they figured out they could put out you know fires using foam or just put a whole bunch of water on it and and with you know, they used to use dynamite to blow off the valves and the different components of a well. Uh, but then they invented the sand line cutter. They'd have like a, uh, like a, like a wire line yeah. uh, with the resin on it and they'd run it 
back and forth across. It, it, it would pick up sand on the ground. It would, it would go back and forth across like a well and it would cut it off. And then they invented the. So pick up sand and be abrasive. And yeah, it'd be abrasive. Like a giant yeah, saw, exactly. essentially. Yeah. So yeah. now, now if we want to cut something off, we, we have a, a dual jet cutter. So we pump water and abrasive material at like a super high pressure and, and rate and we could cut anything. Yeah. That's wild. That's what, you know, it, from the outside looking in, it's like you've had a big evolution in how we actually control wells now. And mm-hmm. it seemed like things back in the day were a lot more cowboy. And it's like, yeah, we they use were. dynamite because we like to blow shit up. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and now we got jet cutters and jet cutters. things things of this, this so, nature. So. so there's something they, like nobody figured it out till like the 50s, but corrugated, regular everyday corrugated tin. Yeah. We still use that on everything yeah. today. We put on our bulldozers, any any equipment going in close. So why talk people, about that? Why it's it's a great heat tent? reflector and it's it's everywhere. It's super cheap. It's super too, cheap. Right? Yeah. yeah. But they didn't they didn't they didn't know like nobody thought to use that till like the fifties. Yeah. That's when Myron Kinley he was like, oh you know. So they just put on everything. We have like we'll make like little we call them uh, uh, catwalks. We'll make like yeah. little uh little walkways and we'll we'll pick it up with the bulldozer and we'll get up close to the fire and we'll be looking at it or like heat shields and yeah i yeah. mean you talk about you know the operation and one it's a super dangerous environment not just because of the pressure and heat from the well but you know if you have a drilling rig that's burned down i mean you just have iron everywhere and you don't yeah. have a clean mm-hmm. work environment right and so i think you have to be super resourceful right in that line of work and critical thinking is is essential right because yes. probably no one job is the same and you have to really Think about how to work around things and right. clean things up and get things shut in. I mean, cut up a drone. Rig, sorry, no, go ahead. Cut up a drone rig is it seems like like something simple, but it's like one of the most. <laughs> well, you just go in there and cut it up. No, there's like potential energy built up. Yeah, and things could collapse, and it's it's like a few guys are really good at cutting up a drone rig. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you, you say cutting up a drilling rig is simple, That's, and anyone that spend any amount of time on yeah. a drilling rig, you're like, there's nothing simple on a right. drilling rig. Well, you, right. think, you think, like, you look at it, it's like just a slag, you know, just, you, oh, I'll just walk up there and just start, you know, cutting things. But, yeah, you got to you gotta cut things in a specific way and, yeah. and move things out of the way. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so very complex, just very complex yeah. from beginning to, mm-hmm. to end. I mean, you know, learning from these guys, seeing everything, it's like the only constant variable of every job they go on is that there's some sort of flow and pressure. Yeah. And that's the only thing that's like consistent. Yeah. Every scenario is like off the charts. Yeah, the, the, cons- the consistent thing is right. you're walking into a shit show. And and yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, else what's the job the program? Air. First thing, assess and see what do we, <laughs> yeah. you know, what do we even have, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. um, you know, getting to know these guys since I've been over at CUD and not coming from that side of the business has been pretty fascinating to see what they, what they deem easy. Yeah. and figure out and, and can do so it's, yeah yeah it's, it's just wild you know i've uh, done several videos explainer videos on uh, social media um you know blowouts always get a lot of a lot of views because sure. it's just a lot of action right and so um you know that's one thing i try to explain to people is like you know when you're watching this on video it may not seem like that big of a deal but one high pressure mm-hmm. a ton of heat um, you have, you know, drilling rigs, work over rigs, just falling apart around you. And so, um, yeah, I mean, oil operations are already a pain enough as it is. Mm-hmm. And then when you get on one of those jobs, it's just incredibly, uh, difficult working scenario. So yeah, that was always my dream to be in, uh, well controlled because that's where all the action's at. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I think kind of like teeing up this conversation for what y'all are building on the software side is good because, you know, kind of going through the evolution of technologies and methods that have been used in the past and what's being used now. And, you know, the oil and gas industry, um, it's always been a really interesting industry to me because there's so much, um, there's constantly room for improvement and Mm -hmm. innovation, right? I mean, everywhere that you're looking, there's something that can be done better. And especially today with software, um, you know, there's, there's just, you look around the industry, I mean, everywhere, uh, things that can be done better. So tell me, you know, y'all told me uh, a little bit in a prior conversation about what CUD is building from a software perspective. Cause when you think about CUD, you know, you're someone like me, you know, I'm thinking traditional, oil filled service, sure. your coil yeah. tubing units, your well control snubbing units, things like that. Um, but I always had this thesis that, hey, the service companies that build software become 
digital service companies as well are the ones that are going to win in the future. Um, so super interesting to hear that you guys are going down this path. Tell me, uh, let's talk about high level, what y'all have built and then we can dive into it. Sure. Yeah. So I'll kind of kick off, um, you know, so you, you kind of look at, like you said, the evolution of stuff that with the software and incorporating it. And of course now the mobility, you know, with, with iPads and phones, you know, it, it makes more sense with the access to it. And so we've had some iterations through the company, you know, even from like the coil side building up. Um, you know, a lot of different groups have these kind of remote apps. You can watch, you know, the jobs remote and everything. Yeah. There. And so, um, you know, the other kind of where the well control side was going, like you said, you know, it's crazy and fun to watch all this fire stuff. But at the end of the day, especially for our industry across the board, we don't like having those types of videos out there. Yeah. And so it's become more of a kind of a preventative type scenario that these, that, that uh, our team has here going, you know, I mean, from rig audits, uh, you know, obviously with WCS and our portfolio, well control schools, so training up front to handle situations mm -hmm. that they started kind of seeing, you know, and that's where it got into, you know, some of these audits and things were going on, but, you know, how cumbersome is, you know, you go and you, you inspect a wellhead or whatever you may do and, and you build up, you know, a binder this big and where does that typically go, right? And it goes possibly in an office to say, yeah, we did it. You know, there are not, no major red flags. And then who deciphers that information? Yeah. And so, um, you know, John was was a key integral part of of how do you make that more accessible? How do you make it usable? And basically build, you know, assess risk, and, and build different scenarios so that it's more effective on what that operator may be able to do um, to prevent any sort of these events that that we. Yeah, I mean, these guys get called out. To I mean, right? prevention should always be the the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, no company wants to have a blowout and. You know, it's much more serious than just having the videos on the internet. You know, people die in right. these scenarios a lot of the time. And right. so um, you have loss of life, loss of, you know, economic uh, interest as well. And so, um, you know, it's kind of like the, the old saying, you know, Apple Day keeps the doctor away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. or what's the one about, you know, uh, uh, there's one about something cure. There you go. Yeah, he knows what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. An, ounce An ounce of prevention, prevention is like a pound of cure. Yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. 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 People are listening. They know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, prevention is, is huge. Um, Y'all talked about, you know, like well control school and, um, you know, well control school for anyone that's not familiar with it is very intricate uh, training program that runs you through a um, ton of scenarios for blowouts and uh well control so you're doing lots of math lots of calculations mm. um, that's one thing that i try to teach people outside the industry i'm like hey there's a lot of engineering and math <laughs> and physics that go into oil and gas we're not just a bunch of rednecks out here you mm -hmm. know punching holes yeah. in that's the right ground. that's so, right um, educated rednecks yeah that's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah still rednecks we're just educated yeah. rednecks yeah. <laughs> keep, keep it real yeah <laughs> yeah and so um you know, wall control has always been pretty fascinating to me because you are doing some very uh, intricate thinking um, under extremely uh, stressful uh, scenarios. And so, you know, with the app, you know, what are the inputs that because you know, I'm thinking about like my time offshore, um, you know, it's really interesting to see the contrast between land operations and offshore operations when you're offshore. I mean, you're pulling up, you're doing BOP testing at certain intervals that are set sure. by Bessie and um, they're really big on, you know, BOP preventative um, maintenance and things like that. Um, and then you go on land and like things have obviously changed when I started roughneck from when I started roughnecking. But when I started roughnecking back in 2010, I mean, I'm down there in a the hammer wrench nippling up our BOP. Um, I remember, you know, two months into uh, me working on a rig, we had a blowout and me and the derrick hand slid down the v-door uh, to go open up the hcr line and our handle fell off the valve into the cellar and our cellar was full of water and i had to hold him by his feet while he dove into the oh, cellar they got the to get hand. the handle yeah. and i mean this thing's just roaring i mean it's shooting up mud over the crown of the derrick and uh, so yeah things have changed a lot did you quit that day <laughs> like i told y'all before we got on the podcast yeah. i'm one of the last of like the, well, the yeah, old generation yeah, from, that, yeah. from those days yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um <laughs> you know and i always just kind of saw that that um you know the the inspection and maintenance and preventative um, processes for wealth control wasn't as strict as it was um, offshore. And so 
Um, I think it's really cool to see these things being deployed mm -hmm. out into land. So, you know, say that I'm a, uh, you know, is the EMP the, is it the EMP or like drilling rigs? Like who's using this app? Like who's the end user of it? Or is it everyone? It's, it's companies. We've, we've seen a lot of interest from operators, you yeah. know, people that companies that just have producing wells, um, uh, gas storage companies, uh, uh, underwriters, like, you know, people that are, are companies that are underwriting, uh, feels like a thousand yeah. uh, wells. Yeah. And somebody approaches the underwriter is like, Hey, we want to insure a thousand wells. Oh, you know, a lot of like now how they, how they handle it's like, okay, yeah, we'll insure a thousand wells. This, this, this audit program gives them more granularity to see like, you know, are, how are the wells doing? What they're actually underwriting. Yeah, what they're, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, look at it from like an underwriter perspective. Like, what does that tell me? You know, if I'm looking at a thousand wells, sure. like what information does it actually tell me? So it, it gives you, oh, so let me, let me back it up. The, yeah, the, back it up. Yeah. The, uh, the wellhead audit is a, it's, we took a paper-based audit and we digitize it. So what okay. used to be, you it would take you, uh, you, you'd have to go take pictures, and then you have to fill out a checklist, and then you go back to town, and you have to, you'd open up Word, and then you input the pictures, and and type, you know, type in what you saw. And, you know, it took like a four or five hour uh, yeah. process, like that's in the office, and then like maybe a one hour process in the field, and we we turned it into like a thirty minute process. Yeah, that's that's we we did a, a test well, and that was the 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 least computer savvy. Of us, you know, we had like five guys. The guy, they, you know, the guy. Beta the, test, right? Yeah, yeah. True, true beta test. Like, like, he's going to be the worst computer guy that could do These are like yeah. the, the most field of the field guys. Like, how, how do you turn on a computer? You know, these, they, they whipped it out in like 30 minutes doing a whole uh, wellhead audit. Yeah. So, you know, it's crazy when like you talk about that process, um, you know, very manual process. Like it takes five hours. You got to take pictures. Mm -hmm. You're driving back and forth between the field and the office and, so I was talking about earlier is that there's just so much opportunity for software and yeah. like right. in this space because we still do a lot of just things like that, mm -hmm. right? And, th and then the, then you just have like one report for one will, and and that's all you have. So we what we when we went to we went to digit like Bavesh had this idea. My my manager had this idea to to digitize uh, a wellhead audit. When I went to the programmers, I was uh, leading the team. Uh, they said, "Well, we can do this, and we can do this with it." What that was is we we took the data and we put it on the cloud, and so a, a customer can go in and see like they can take a map view and see all their wells in like a ge geographical area. Yeah, or they could go to like a table view and sort it by like you know uh, drill date, you know when it was P and A'd, uh, the API number. We we yeah like our system also ties into the inverse. Uh, yeah. Uh, database yeah. and we pull we could pull information from there nice and so it's like yeah so the, we're, the old school way you know you're going in collecting all this information you're putting it on paper it's one report mm -hmm. it's going back to the field office and it's getting filed away in a right. in a cabinet right and, and it's tedious yes yes it's very tedious and so now with having a cloud-based solution mm -hmm. hey you as an operator as an underwriter you can pull up all thousand wells you know on this right. asset mm -hmm. And you can click into each one and get all the information that you need and pull in, you know, information from and various and other. Is, other exactly. Data sets. And then, cool. and then you could click down, like you could click down to see information on the specific component. Like what's the, what's the flange size? What's the pressure rating? You know, is it corroded or not? Uh, and we, we were talking to a, a customer, uh, an operator last week and they had a problem with uh, uh, keeping track of serial numbers on equipment. Yeah. And what what had happened was they had this like valve, like a like a wing valve, that kept failing. So they would replace it, and they yeah. would fail. And there was like two wing valves sitting to, on location, and there was another wing valve on the well. But uh, I guess they kept they kept taking the little plate and they kept sticking on the new. <laughs> so they like they had, they went through three wing valves and nobody knew about it. And when we told them about our software, they're like, oh. You know, can we license that? Can we have it today? Yeah. You know, so then so actually have like traceability. Traceability of, like, of equipment. Yeah. Right. What's what's been changed out, what the part number is instead of just like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then so as you build up, you know, these, you know, going through either a field or, or wherever they're at, right, is, is, you know, it's not just taking pictures. These guys are closely looking to see condition, right? Yeah. And so they're kind of, they can rate where it is. Is it green? Like it's good operational, mm -hmm. yellow or red, right? So it helps, helps then once you compile all this data 
that instead of just I've got all these well files and I've got to go through and probably find out which ones are the bad ones, a, a quick access they can pull up and see which mm-hmm. which ones they can prioritize, right? Yeah. And then also with the geographical um, aspect is proxi- wells proximity to other things that may increase risk, i.e. roads, structures, schools, things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So that can help then, you know, and, and jump in wherever, but yeah, prioritize we, all that. We had a customer, they, they told us, like, we have all this uh, a geographical or uh, – map data on like we're close by roads yeah schools you know they have like their production pipelines yeah and we said huh, well give it to us and we'll we'll put it on our map where all your wells are yeah and and and, sh- and we could show you uh like when you pull up the map view like where all your wells are in comparison yeah, to everything that's pretty cool you know a lot of emps have a lot of gis data and so now mm-hmm. you can take that and overlay it and actually see you know where that's at and it poses any risk. Um, it was great for this customer. They had uh, 900 wells and uh, they wanted to know what, what the worst ones were. So they gave us the GIS data. Uh, they had like proximity ratings for like, you know, if a well was near a school, Yeah. they had a, a wellhead company that had gone out and looked at all the wells and they, so we, we didn't actually go out to the field and like, and look at these wells. They just, we just yeah, gather those all the data from imagery yeah. and everything. And they yeah. had pictures of all the wells. We uploaded it to our, our system. And then yeah. they, uh, they had uh, AOF, like absolute open flow data yeah. for all the wells, and we we had a a, a guy that does plume modeling, okay. gas plume modeling. Yeah, we ran all those, and uh, we ranked all nine hundred wells for him. And they said, "Oh, great! You know, they they took the top yeah, take, twenty worst wells, yeah. like the highest score Go wells, focus and, on those ones. and they're going to yeah. pin A or fix those up. Yeah. So like a like a well that's out in the middle of nowhere is brand new, and it you know." If, it wouldn't blow up that much, uh, would be like a low score in a, in a yeah. well right next to a school that's corroded. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got those are the ones you need to fix. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, it allows you to build a accurate risk profile mm-hmm. on your assets, right? Exactly. And you can high grade and say, oh, hey, these yeah. five wells, are like, yeah, we don't want to kill a class of kindergartners with a blowout, so right. maybe we should take care of <laughs> Exactly. <that one. laughs> the, the main three things we're looking for uh, with the wellhead autos, uh, pressure, issues like pressures on uh annuluses that you're not supposed to have pressure on yeah uh, corrosion yeah and valve functionality that's what i was going to ask like in these well audits um or these well head audits um you know is it one is that regulated by the state um or is this just that the companies do it like do they have to file there's a with there's the a uh, api six uh, specification 6d has regulations on how your well is supposed to be uh set up and in in our audit program, there's like uh, different failure like rule failure rules. Yeah. So you could go okay. They didn't they didn't make this rule like it's supposed to have a everything's supposed to have a like a little tag or it's yeah. supposed to like you know some of the older wells that may have like some weird like sized flange like you know it's supposed to go three and sixteenth four to sixteenth and maybe they put like a four and a half inch out there in the fifties or something. And, yeah. Okay. That's a that's another API rule. And we we tie everything all the failures back to API. Got you. Uh, rules yeah, and then API common practices. Standards. Yeah, got you. Right. Understood. Yeah. So when they're doing these audits, I mean, um, are they taking like, are you taking in data like uh, pressure tests, or is it mostly like visual data, like guys going out there and he's like, yeah, it looks good, or I see corrosion, um, or most of them. I guess what I'm I'm getting at is like, is most of that data the qualitative data? Is it visual or it's actual? Um, mm. We got pressure tests. Most most of this visual. Okay. But if if and we're very adaptive, so if, if somebody's like, I, I want to include pressure test data in in the software, like when I when I go on on the cloud and look at the the wells, yeah, send it to us. We'll stick it on there. Yeah, we have we have all our uh, programmers that made the software. They're all in house, so so we're very adaptive. We had a we had a one customer. They wanted to track uh, serial numbers on all the equipment. They were like, oh, well, I didn't even think of that, and we yeah. just we put a serial number tag. Uh, on all the different equipment. Yeah, I mean, you talk about like replacing those, uh, you know, those wing valves. It's yeah. like, you know, you drill a well 15, 20 years ago and you don't know what equipment you have out there. Right. Yeah. And that becomes a pain in the ass in itself. And so just knowing what you have to work with um, in the first place is, uh, is huge. Um, so you just made an interesting comment there that I thought was uh, uh, unique. You said all the software developers are in house. Mm-hmm. Um, are those people here in Houston? Mm-hmm. Or the internet? So they're here they're in all Houston? in the woodlands. So uh-huh. you actually yeah. got a, like a dev shop here in Houston. Yeah, that's yeah, out yeah, code, yeah. Huh? That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, 
I I have yet to run across from someone that's like, yeah, I'm a software developer for what company could They'll throw me off. Yeah. If someone told me that, you know, <laughs> besides, besides yeah. the wallet, are they been, they've been making other softwares. Yeah. I mean, they've been working on different projects. Like I said, with the, um, kind of back towards the coil side, right. We yeah. have cut on demand, you know, that okay, we yeah. built an app, you know, so it's web-based as well. Right. So yeah. you can see coil jobs going on, snubbing jobs going on. We've, we've put data, you know, DAX yeah. on all those. Um, and then, so built into the app with like, um, you know, general calculators and things, but basically there's some probably different versions out there, but, yeah. but built that all in house so that we can, you know, as we see the need for tweaks and fixes and all that stuff, I mean, we can just directly get with the teams and, and yeah. they help kind of just crank it out. Yeah. So, I mean, it seems like that's a pretty big initiative for cut across the company to digitalize and start making software solutions for companies. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's, um. You know, it's funny because like when you think of CUD or when I think of CUD, like I think of CUD as like, um, I don't want to say like old school OFS, but I mean, they are, they've been around for a long time. Uh, but just like you think of CUD, like you think of oil field. Like, mm. I've always yeah. respected CUD and yep. the crews that work for CUD. Um, and you wouldn't think of CUD as being like the ones like, hey, let's go make software, right? Like you'd think of CUD as, no, we'll just keep running coil the way that we've always done it or, you know, capping wells the yeah. way that we've always capped them. And so that's pretty cool. Um, the you know, great thing about CUD old... is we have both. Yeah. The new school and the old school. We have a guy. Yeah. So, so we, we all have like a employee number. Yeah. It goes up by one tick. So, yeah. you know, Bobby Joe Cub was number one. Yeah. We have a guy in well control that he was over in Kuwait, uh, you know, with the, 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 the Desert Saddam yeah. Hussein yeah. Desert Storm. Yeah. Yeah. He, his, his employee number was seven. Really? Yeah. Is he and still it, there? He's still there. Wow. Yeah. Need to and mine's me, uh, like 31,000 yeah. something. I want to get a podcast with number seven because I, <laughs> yeah. I bet he's seen some shit. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah y'all, need to, y'all need to make that happen. That'd be good. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. break out some whiskey on that one. And, there you uh, go. Yeah, we'll get get serious. Yeah. Well, you got you to gotta have a, we well, got to get the whiskey. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> you got to come on with some stories. All right. You want the whiskey. We'll bring more stories. All right. I'll see how it is. But no, I mean, you talk about, you know, the Quaid oil fire. That's what you know, so famous online, and yeah. um, um, what all the YouTube videos are, and so people think of those. Um, mm-hmm. And so I've like, you know, yeah, I'd kill to talk to someone that was actually over there doing yeah. that because those are stories that I would love to tell. We have but, four guys with the company now that were over in Kuwait. Yeah, and that's what I think. That's like that's what's kind of crazy about like you know we're talking about how well control is just kind of like tight knit. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, you don't have a lot of like people coming in and out of yeah, that right, skill set. Right, you know, yeah. like right, right. you're there, and uh, you know that you're building upon decades of of knowledge. It's kind of like uh, I did pipe recovery for a while in wireline, and I was like so amazed by pipe recovery and fishing hands. Like that's not just something that you learn overnight. Mm-hmm. Those guys right. have to learn that over decades, and yeah. so yeah, that's uh, that's funny. Yeah, we got to get uh, we got to get him on the podcast. Yes, that'll be that'll be yeah. a good one. So. With the uh, with the software, so is that the is that the main product? Is the uh, wellhead? Uh, uh, what's what do y'all call it? The, wellhead audit. The audit. Yeah, yeah. cut assured wellhead audit. Okay, is cool. what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so with that, you know, what kind of, anal- you know, the thing is like this industry. Um, I've always had a data um, aggregation problem, right? And you know, things getting done on paper, getting put in a mm-hmm. filing cabinet, or we start digitizing and collecting data and we have a ton of data in the industry. And then the problem is, is it goes to silos. You don't have any way to actually leverage the data. Um, you said that you guys integrate, uh, you have an API with Inveris, so that's cool. Mm-hmm. You bring in data there. Um, you know, integrating with other, uh, are y'all integrating with any other softwares that, uh, operators mm-hmm. are using, um, that, that makes it easy to tie into the tech stack. Tell me about that. We're making, we're making other softwares under cut assured. Yeah. And, uh, like we're, we're using a lot of the program that we did for wellhead audit and we're making a, a, a rig inspection audit. That's, that's a brick cool. bread, bread and butter for us is going out doing rig inspection. So that takes like eight hours. That's the for, bread and butter of, of cut. Is no, 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 no. For, for, uh, uh, like the, the preventative work. We're oh, not gotcha, on blowouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Okay. yeah. The bread and butter okay. for okay, like the cool. non-blowout and yeah. non, non uh, emergency yeah. work. What all, yeah. what, what falls under a rig inspection? What so, all, so we'll what go out, there? we'll go out, we'll start at the, uh, the company man's office. Then we'll go to the tool pusher and then we'll go all the way like to the, from the accumulator. We'll go up around, uh, to the, the choke manifold and we do a visual inspection of all the equipment on the rig and we check it all against API 59 yeah. and, uh, uh, 53. 
Okay. And, and other other API rules. Yeah. And and uh, uh, common best practices. And we we check a rig to make sure it's up to snuff, so that if something were to happen, we could go out there and and do yeah, well control work right away. Yeah. 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 You need to make sure that you have something to work with, right? Mm -hmm. If something something goes south. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so so what we do is we have a we have a like old school wellhead audit. We have a checklist and we yeah. take pictures, and then we go back to the office. So we're trying to get get that put on the app. Yeah. Do the same. Do the same thing here. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this this has kind of been, it's, we're continually learning, which is the fun thing with it being digital like this is, yeah. is you can tweet, you know, he said, we've already made tons of adjustments and all that, but then just the applications that we've seen, um, you know, we've had operators reach out to us, all that, and we've even started looking at the, you know, having conversations, um, you know, almost to the point of, you know, he talked about underwriters, but also like an M&A situations, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, when you buy a house, one of the first things you do in the first 10 days is an inspection, inspection yeah. right? You know, <laughs> yeah. you want to know what you're getting into. Yeah. And so traditionally it's always been a lot of, you know, or how I always perceive it to be is, you know, is it good rock? What do the production numbers look like? All that. Right. But from a true out surface asset standpoint, you know, I don't know how close they really look at that to really prioritize and, and either, you know, increase the value or devalue whatever they're maybe yeah. looking at. And then, and, and then, you know, come in and, in a discovery phase of, of some sort of transaction, you know, be able to go out there and help them with that evaluation. Yeah. And then, and then just lay it all out there. Right. Yeah. And yeah. That reminds me of this story and this is a little off track, but I'm going to tell it anyways. Um, <laughs> hey, you're Mike number one, go for it. <laughs> <It's your podcast. laughs> but, uh, I remember, so I, I used to run expandable casing and so actually kind of closely related to, yep. uh, well control, you know, hopefully we get our problems fixed before there's any, well control issues, but I remember I was out in West Texas and I was running uh, some casing patches and I asked this company and said, Hey, I need you to, uh, run a casing inspection tool. So I need a log caliper log so that I can see this and they wouldn't do it. And I finally asked the company, I'm like, Hey, well, I want y'all run this caliper log. He's like, because all this casing's bad on all this whole lease. <laughs> He's like, we want to flip this, it's, it's gonna we want to flip hard. this asset. Yeah. We don't want anyone to yeah. know what That's they're right. buying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just getting as much Intel and in M&A process mm -hmm. as you can to make sure that, Hey, like we're actually buying a asset that has integrity and it's not a mm -hmm. massive liability. I mean, right. you know, uh, valuing, uh, oil and gas assets is already hard enough, you know, running on assumptions that everything is mechanically, uh, fine and has integrity and, you know, just trying to underwrite something and you have no idea about the actual mm -hmm. condition of the right. asset is very tough. And so I'm sure. They love any platform like this where yeah. you can get more insights. So yeah. yeah. That's um you you had asked uh, about uh incorporating data. So yeah. so we could take any data from anywhere and incorporate it into our, our well head audit. You know, it's best to like in like an Excel file or something like yeah. that. But if you you know, some company has like membership to some data programmer, we can we can rig that up and have it import and, and when you know the the user interface when the customer goes there they can see anything they want to see cool how yeah. about like exporting the information on here like you know say i'm an engineer i'm just putting myself like in, in an emp's shoes and um you know i want to know do i have the ability to like select a radius of the wells that are in this radius on the lease or i just do i just select uh you know check mark all the apis i want how does that work for actually uh selecting yeah. the assets that i want to look at and then exporting them? so we have uh the latin long for all the wells okay. you tell us like a radius we'll give you all the wells in the radius yeah and then you you have like a list of api numbers of different wells like you just yeah. give it to us we'll we'll give it back to you cool, cool. all the information you want and yeah yeah so you know obviously we have lots of uh Lots of people listen to the show, but lots of engineers and uh, people would be interested in this. Where do they like? Where do you go if you want to learn about CUD software? Do you call up your local Will Tubin dude and tell him that you, <laughs> yeah. you want to check out the software? Do you go to CUD's website? Like, what do you? So you go to CUDAssure.net, CUDAssure.net, or uh, uh, you know, look up look up CUD. Give us a call. So is that CUDAssure? A S S U R E A S S U R E D dot net assured yeah all right cool yeah. we'll drop you'll, a you'll, and... it'll pop up it'll be picture me doing a <laughs> yeah. are you yeah, the like, star you, you, on yeah, the website yeah, yeah, yeah you right. can afford a bit of mall, but, uh, yeah, no, then, they wanted a real engineer real yeah. world field right, out there right, man. Right. they didn't want some los angeles hollywood <laughs> actor right. out there yeah, yeah. No, there's there's a there's a full uh, uh demo that we shot on uh, mm -hmm. you know um through a link there that you can watch and just kind of oh, cool. with what 
what kind of takes place from his standpoint of physically getting out there and the type of outputs and, and, and uh, deliverables that you can get from it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So we will drop a link to that in the show notes. Um, that way you can check it out, go on there. They got a demo. Um, I'm sure you can also find both Chris and John online. Uh, assuming you guys are both on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. right? mm-hmm. All right, yeah. cool. Like every good one of my guests, uh, professionally you're on there. So <laughs> find them on there. Um, make sure to check it out. This is super cool stuff. You know, um, this is the, what got me excited about the industry in 2016 was seeing the, uh, different parts of the oil and gas industry digitizing and creating software. So it's cool to see a company like could, uh, taking initiative and making that happen. If you're listening to the show, you liked it, please share it with a friend. This is the part where I beg you to share the show. Give us a five-star review. If you are listening on Spotify and Apple We will catch y'all on next week's episode.